There's this, uh, a Zen story about this artist who painted a picture of hell. And when he stepped back and looked at it, he was frightened. That's, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? <laughs> we create our own hell and then we become frightened by it. So, um, <laughs> I was trying to think of some quote by Mark Twain, but uh, anyway. Um, so, uh, that's particularly, particularly <laughs> hard in the case of uh, death. Um, so, I, I, I thought I might talk about some of the ways people look at it and why that's pro problematic. <laughs> um, and how I look at it. Right? Well, first of all, if you, um, if you believe in any kind of afterlife, you know, souls or spirits or whatever, you should watch someone else's video. <laughs> because uh, I don't believe in any of that stuff. No heaven, no hell, or anything. So, when you die, that's it. And if you look at it that way, it, um, I think it makes it easier to see the problem some people have. Because, for example, someone says, Oh, I'll die and I'll never see my granddaughter's lovely smile again. I'll never feel her little arms around my neck again. <laughs> well, that image that you're conjuring up, you're imagining it happening in the future, right? It's not happening now. It's, it's something that you're imagining in the future. And uh, you're not going to be here. <laughs> you're not going to be here for your little uh, whoever to, to hug your neck. All your experience, all your memories, everything that ever happened to you will, as far as you're concerned, just evaporate as soon as you die. It's just gone. And um, so there will be life after death. Other people will be living after you die, hopefully, uh, unless the world ends soon. Um, so life will go on, but not your life. Um, So, in a way, if you're missing, if you're thinking that death means that, oh, you're going to miss all these future happenings, um, you know, why lament something that you will never experience? I mean, it's not going to, it's only happening in your head. You're like the artist who paints a picture of hell and then gets afraid of it. You're, you're painting a picture of afterlife or something. A picture, you're imagining a future and you're out of it. And you're being distressed by that. <laughs> what? Just don't imagine it, okay? <laughs> it's not real. It's just in your head. Imagine something else. Imagine that your granddaughter or whoever is going to be running down the path in the park with her little friends, having fun, and um, it's a much better thing to think about happening in the future than lamenting the fact that you're not going to be there to hug her. Um, so, I think the first the first helpful hint is 
don't be afraid of something that is only in your imagination. Right? That's, that's easy enough. Imagine something else. Um, and that comes to, uh, goes to for a question of grieving. Some people think when somebody dies, well, that it's just automatic that you can't help but grieve if you're a human being. It's just built into us. Well, it's not. It's, uh, people grieve differently in different cultures and it's just, you know, a wide variety of ways of grieving. Um, so it's something that's learned in the culture. And my own approach, <laughs> both my parents are dead, right? And, uh, all my aunts and uncles, and my kid brother, uh, Mark, um, he's dead. Um, so all these people are dead. And I found myself once, my dad was among the first to go, yes. <laughs> um, it was really close to me. And I found myself one day in my kitchen missing him, you know, or, or thinking about that I would never see him sitting on the porch telling a story again. And when I thought that, it made me sad and it didn't feel good. And I thought, why should I think about something that doesn't make me feel good? <laughs> instead, instead of thinking about that, about my loss, about what I'm not going to experience again, think about what I have, you know? I have some wonderful memories of that guy. And, uh, and my kid brother too, you know. Uh, and I, I, I treasure those. I, but uh, they're not here anymore. <laughs> They're not here anymore. So all I have left are those things. And that's, it's got to be good enough. You know, uh, there's an idea that reality as it is, is so horrible. <laughs> Life is suffering, you know, the Buddha said, that we have to, uh, we have to pretend that things are otherwise or else we'll just be depressed all the time. <laughs> it's not true, you know. Um, when you realize that trying to pretend that reality is other than it is, takes a lot of energy. <laughs> and uh, if you think about it, you'll find that your problems with reality aren't in reality itself. It are, uh, your problem is in things you imagine about reality. Um, I like the, you know, the artist with the painting. So, uh, did I cover death pretty well? <laughs> um, you know, in, in, in my own case, whenever I think about uh, the world after I'm dead. I think, you know, I'm 77, right? And in actuarial tab tables, I've got about 10 years left, right? <laughs> but my folks, my parents both lived into their 90s. So uh, there's, a, there's a chance I'll make more than 10 years, 15 maybe, something like that. So, uh, Knowing that, 
I mean, we all know that I mean, if we think about it. From the time we're, uh, you know, teenagers or something, people die, and uh, you don't see them anymore. They're gone. Um, so <laughs> we've always known we were going to die, but now for me at seventy-seven, it's a little closer than uh, I, I used to think of it, right? So I, I, I probably think about it more. And one thing that comes up with some people when they think about their death, or you know, you get an announcement, you've got, the doctor says you've got months to live, but you still feel pretty good, right? <laughs> How would you spend your last months, right? Um, and in my case, I'm so lucky that I am living a life that I just totally love. And I will continue, <laughs> I'll continue to live the way I'm living. Not, not necessarily, that I'm sure there'll be changes, right? But um, I, there's no place I'd rather be than here, right where I am. There, if there were, I would go there. But, uh, you know, it's like, I'm happy here. Why would I go somewhere else? <laughs> uh, so I, I think ideally, uh, we all find ourselves when we get to the point where death seems more imminent than before. We will feel like we are living the life we would want to live if we were going to die tomorrow. So, uh, because <laughs> uh, you know, I try not to say that, it's a bad habit. Um, and now I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, oh, one thing we dread, some of us dread, some of us have dread, dreaded at one time or another, is a painful death. You know, we don't mind, we don't mind the idea of dying so much, but we don't want it to be a long, drawn-out affair with lots of suffering involved, right? You know, you, you don't want that. <laughs> you want to be, you know, having a wonderful dinner and just fall over, right? <laughs> Something like that. But um, some solace, <laughs> if you find in a, a situation where. Uh, you're making a slow, painful exit, and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, I, I so I'm so happy that they have the right to die. They're getting the right to die law in places. But the solace I offer you is this: all that time that you're suffering, all that pain and misery that you're going through will evaporate in a flash <laughs> as soon as you die and it'll be gone it'll be gone forever uh, so I wonder if I find myself in that situation uh, will it be a solace I don't know you know um, I have a <laughs> I have developed a strange reaction to bad news, and that is that I laugh. And uh, <laughs> you wonder why that is. Um, how could I explain that to someone? I, I, I laughed inappropriately. A friend was telling me a story. And uh, 
she got to this part and it was just so awful and yet so human. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. <laughs> it's just heartbreaking. So, so I, I laugh. <laughs> uh, I laugh that we're human beings. haven't figured out how to be any better. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a happy, happy note to close. <laughs> It's just something that, <laughs> you know, Lisa Feldman Barrett, that's her area of research, is emotion, right? And she finds that there's no cr really clear defining uh, measure, way to measure emotion. There's, there's no uh, indication in the brain that you're experiencing one emotion or another. There's no way to find any of it to find a sig signature is what they're looking for. Where in the brain does, does anger happen or joy or what? They, they don't know. It's, um, it's you might probably a distributed function. <laughs> but the thing about it is uh, Whatever we feel under whatever circumstances, the capacity to feel that is built in. It may not be built into a particular circuit in the brain, but the capability of feeling things, most of us have. <laughs> you know, I guess that's what... Uh, That there are there are some sort of brain uh, situations where people don't have ordinary emotions, but most of us have something <laughs> that we can call emotion. But um, so so that part's built in the capacity for it, and then what triggers it is culture. <laughs> you know, what? when is it appropriate to cry? And when is it appropriate to laugh? Uh, or scream, or whatever. Uh, the lights just go bright. <laughs> I have something weird in the, in the room. Um, so, so, the the occasions that we feel emotion are are built in. So, I mean, the occasions are cultural. I get it straight here. Um, but. You. <laughs> You can allow yourself to feel things in any circumstances you want. Um, you know, like like today, while I've been making this, I felt uh, grief and 
sadness. It's okay. <laughs> Those are, you know, they're feelings. They're okay to have. Um, and there are lots of other wonderful feelings that we're capable of, you know? Orgasm, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's an incredible feeling. Um, you know, and there are tons of them. And uh, there's no reason not to indulge them. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to experience them in a programmed way. Although, you know, I allow myself to. If you watch TV, you watch a show or something, the guys that are writing and the actors and everybody is trying to evoke a certain emotion within you. And they, most of them are pretty good at it, right? So, oh yeah, I found myself crying. <laughs> Oh, and falling deeply in love. You know, it, it's like, it's it's part of your repertoire as a human being. So, uh, if you can recognize it as just an experience that is emerging under the circumstances and not take it seriously, not take it in a way that causes you suffering, discomfort, you know? Um, I could, that's probably enough, right? <laughs> I could talk about this stuff for a long time. I, I apologized to my kid brother once, Mark, about uh, talking his ear off. And he said, that's what you do, you talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for whatever reason, that's what I do, I talk. And uh, the idea behind all my talking is to try to help other people to feel as good as I feel, as happy as I feel, as much of the time as I feel. And I think a lot of it is just that we're taught to imagine things that are unpleasant. <laughs> Don't imagine those things. And that's my message for today. Turn those bad things off. <laughs>